Hi, Parish. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. This is our final week in a seven-week series that we covered during the Lenten season. We were in the Gospel of John. We were studying several statements that Jesus made that were recorded there. All the statements began with the words, I am. And so we talked about when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. Today, we are talking about resurrection. And we have two stories. Um featuring two different women and two resurrections. And Jesus, of course, is centered in both of those stories. So I want to jump right in to our first resurrection story, which is in John 11. Jesus was friends with a family consisting of two sisters named Mary and Martha, and they had a brother named Lazarus. While Jesus was away, he got word from the sisters that their brother Lazarus was really sick, and they asked Jesus to come. Jesus was delayed in getting there. And so by the time he had arrived, um, Lazarus had died. And so the sister Martha went out to meet Jesus when he arrived. And she said to him, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. So where have you put him? Jesus asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. So they went to the tomb where Lazarus was laid, and Jesus said, roll the stone aside. But Martha protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Martha's comment was interesting when Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And she said, yes, he will rise again when everyone else rises at the last day. She was referring to some Jewish theology that was popular at that time that believed that the fullness of God's kingdom, the Messiah, would eventually come and that everyone would be raised from the dead. So she was saying, yeah, I know he's going to rise again at some point. It's interesting to me that Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't say, I will be the resurrection and the life. He didn't say, um, someday you'll see what I mean when I, when I rise again. This all occurred before his own crucifixion and resurrection. So they didn't have anything to base his statement on. They didn't know what he was talking about. But he said, I am the resurrection and the life, not I will be. Those who believe in me will never die. He's referring to eternal life. And we talked several weeks ago about the fact that eternal life, we remember it has no end. We all think of that, I think. But we forget that eternal also means that there's no beginning. It always was. It always is. It always will be. And so Jesus says, I am that everlasting life. Those who believe in me have everlasting life. And when we choose to participate in that everlasting life, we find it's already begun. It started without us. And when we choose to participate in that everlasting life, it begins exactly at that moment in the here and the now. And so Jesus is telling her something more than about a bodily resurrection. Your brother will rise again, but I am the resurrection and the life. There is already resurrection. There is already life. And they still didn't understand. And so when he said, let's roll the stone away, she said, well, he smells by now. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but Jesus says, let's roll the stone away. Come out, Lazarus. And Lazarus came out, still bound in the grave clothes. It's as though the reminder of death was still clinging to him. Though his body was alive, 
those grave clothes were a reminder of death and that someday Lazarus would die again. Someday his body would fail him again. And Jesus wants us to see that there's something more going on here than a bodily resurrection. He kind of backs up the, the train a little bit, backs it up, because he sees that they're not quite ready for it. And so when he prays in front of Lazarus's tomb, he says, God, I know you always hear me, which, of course, because we know that Jesus is God. But he says, I'm saying this for the benefit of the people who are here so that they'll believe. I'm saying this for the benefit of those who haven't yet understood that I am God, that I am the one who brings eternal life, who is eternal life. And so I think when we get to Easter, I think it's almost like a do-over. It's like a, a, a second time. Let me, let me tell you guys this lesson again. Let me show you again what it means for me, Jesus, to be the resurrection and the life. And so then we move ahead to John chapter 20. Jesus has been crucified on Friday. He's dead. He's been buried in a tomb. The stone has been rolled in front of the tomb, it's sealed, and it's being guarded. The Sabbath occurs on Friday night, goes till Saturday night. And so first thing Sunday morning at first light, his friends, his followers were able to attend him. They were thinking that they would attend him um, in his burial. They would attend his body. But John 20 tells us that early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Jesus's friend Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said, Sir, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I will go and get him. Jesus said, Mary. She turned to him and cried out, Teacher! Mary Magdalene found the disciples then, and she went and told them, I have seen the Lord. And so the apostle Peter ran to the tomb, and when he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. One side note I want to mention. Do you notice the key roles that Martha and Mary Magdalene played in our stories? Jesus heard them. He saw them. He didn't tell them, uh, you're being overdramatic, you're being too emotional, stop being so hysterical. He was listening. He took them seriously. He met them where they were. He comforted them. He spoke to them as equals. This was revolutionary and really, really unheard of in this time. Sometimes it feels like it's unheard of in this time currently, doesn't it? But Jesus sees all. He hears all. He listens to all. And all are equally important and valid and accepted and loved and received and heard and met by Jesus. That's a side note. Let's talk about some similarities between the Lazarus resurrection and the Jesus resurrection. In both cases, there was a tombstone. For Lazarus, it had to be rolled away. For Jesus, when the friends arrived, it was already gone. When Lazarus came out of the tomb, the air of death still clung to him in those grave clothes. Jesus, when he left the tomb, left those clothes behind, left those grave clothes back in the tomb where they belonged. He had no longer uh, did he have need of them. Now, what was he wearing instead? I don't know. The scriptures don't say. That's, that's an interesting thing to ponder. But what I do know is this. Any suggestion of death was gone from him. 
he had been transformed. And so there's, there's resurrection like Lazarus's, which seems more like a resuscitation, a returning to what has been, a restoration of the, the way things have been moving and, and, and going. And Lazarus has returned to that. He's resuscitated. That's a type of resurrection. But I think Jesus's resurrection goes far beyond a resuscitation. Jesus is saying, I am the resurrection and the life. You want to know what resurrection is? Look at me. You want to know what life is? Me. I'm the one who gives meaning and purpose. I'm the one who gives possibility to resurrection. I am the one with whom you are called to participate in eternal life. In other words, participate in the very being of God. Be transformed. I think Jesus was calling them to move to a different plane. They were thinking about bodily resurrection. They were thinking in terms of finite time. They were thinking about earthly timetables and earthly priorities. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Eternity has already started. Eternal life has already started. The beauty and the goodness of God is available in the here and now. Be transformed as Jesus himself was transformed where there was no longer any hint of death clinging to him. He was transformed. It wasn't merely a resuscitation. It was a different kind of resurrection. It was a resurrection that changed everything. It was a victory over death. It was a victory over everything that separates us from God. It was a suggestion that all things in creation will be redeemed. That the one who is the giver of life, the one who is the resurrection, the one who sustains us with true bread, the one who connects us to themself with the true vine, the one who brings the light of the world, the one who sustains us and nurtures us as the good shepherd. That one is calling us to participate in eternal life into the very being of God. Move from this plane of an earthly timetable, finite time, finite bodies, and move to a place where you participate in a renewed and transformed spirit, where the spirit of God works through you and changes you and transforms you and transforms those around you. Jesus is calling us to that type of resurrection. It's not just about the body. It's about also the spirit. And I want to close by asking you this question. What things are clinging to you? What things are you clinging to? Just as those grave clothes stuck to Lazarus. What things are keeping you from participating in the transforming power of God, in the very being of God? What areas of your life do you realize need not just a resuscitation, but need transformation to be made completely new? God is offering us a do-over. God wants to show us so much more than something temporal, something that lasts for a few finite years and then ends. God calls us to come out of that grave. Grave clothes already shed. Come out of the grave. Let go of the things that remind you of your death, that remind you of the temporal. Let go of the things that cause you to cling to the temporal and to hope for nothing more than just a few more years of life like Lazarus had. Let go of those things and reach out to God, the one who calls you to eternal life that has begun in the here and the now. Hear our prayer, O Lord, that we might move to a different plane of being, that we might move from the temporal to the eternal. Draw our spirits to you. Move us closer, we pray. Show us your glory. Show us your transformation. Show us the power of your resurrection in the world, we pray. Have a blessed Easter. I will be back in May to see you and share more with you of what I am learning from the scriptures. Be blessed. Grace and peace.